Hi, and thanks for joining us today. I'm Jen Toscano, a Senior Product Marketing Manager here at Zscaler. And today we're here to talk about data loss prevention and how you can integrate DLP into your data protection strategy. We all know that organizations are facing a variety of challenges as applications and data, including your sensitive customer data and your corporate IP, are increasingly moving from the data center into cloud and SaaS applications. So today we wanna to spend some time talking about those challenges how you can solve them with data loss prevention, and things you need to keep in mind if you're incorporating DLP into your broader data protection strategy. I have two great guests joining me today, and I'd like to introduce them before we get started. Hey, everybody. Hey, Jan. Hey, Brad. Uh, again, my name is Vairavan, uh, Product Manager for Data Protection at Zscaler. Uh, being a Product Manager on Data Protection CASB uh, for the last 10 plus years and helped lots of customers you know, transform to the cloud and help protect their data in the cloud. Yeah, thanks, Jen. And yeah, very much looking forward to the conversation. Um, I joined Zscaler in uh, July of uh, last year. So been here for probably half a year. You know, before that, in all of my various roles, um, I've, you know, worked in the legal industry, uh, healthcare, mainly in, um, you know, security head and CISO roles. And I've put together uh, several DLP strategies uh, at all the organizations I've worked at. So I'm looking forward to sharing some of those experiences and uh, weighing in. One of the first things we wanna talk about is that DLP is not really a new technology. It's been around for a number of years, but the volume of data being created and the distribution of that data all over the place really has forced DLP to evolve. Today, the buzz is all about cloud DLP, but what exactly is it? And how would you say that it's different from traditional DLP solutions that we're all used to? I, you know, the cloud is essentially just a separate channel where you're trying to implement your loss prevention controls, right? And uh, for me personally, I think that the cloud represents the most challenging risk for an organization's DLP program goals, because in my experience, opposed to the other, uh, you know, threat vectors for data loss, like removable media, um, email, and hard copy, you know, there's a number of things that have to not only be in place, but you know, operating as intended, uh, you know, including but not limited to, uh, you know, scalable SSL inspection um, and ensuring that's active and validated to handle, you know, outbound user sessions regardless of uh, location of user. Um, inline contextual and content driven policy, you know, that's uh, designed for data and transit. And then, you know, uh, some of the out of band like CASB type um, uh, features that you see that can do remediation and enforcement policy actions defined specifically for data at rest. Thanks, Brad. I think that makes a lot of sense, uh, especially the context part in, uh, you know, with the cloud context is much, much harder with cloud. If you think about cloud DLP, really, the intent is to protect your data, which is in the cloud. And the cloud has really been built for sharing your data, making collaboration much, much easier. And that makes DLP even more challenging. If you look at the problem, the problem is not that you have sensitive data sitting in the cloud and you want, pre you want to prevent people from putting that data in the cloud. But the real problem is you want to make sure that the right person has access to the right data in the cloud, which means you just can't block people from putting data in the cloud. Uh, so the context around, you know, who owns the data, who has access to the data, what kind of data there is, uh, makes it very, very hard to protect your data in the cloud. The second thing being, you just can't live with a stack of boxes sitting in your on-premises where you backhaul all the traffic. Your cloud DLP really needs to be in the cloud uh, where it can see all the traffic that is going to these cloud applications and make contextual decisions to see who has access to what data. And, and that's a very challenging problem. That's definitely a challenge. And one of the other challenges is that we have workforces that are largely remote today. We obviously shifted to that almost a year ago now, but how does that impact your DLP strategy? And does planning for an eventual return to the office impact that strategy at all? Yeah, I think if you look at a remote workforce, and even if you look at cloud apps, they're built for having access from anywhere, from any device. Uh, and you cannot uh, impede a user from doing his job because if you impede him from doing the job, he'll find a much worse way of doing it. So if you use a cloud sharing app like you know, Box or OneDrive, uh, you might have some data there and you want to share it with your finance team. You want to make it very, very easy. 
So you say company name dot box dot com slash you know Q four results, and and that might be so benign to the end user where he says I'm just making it easy. Yeah. But what he does not realize is that when he created that link company name dot box dot com slash Q four results, that is public to the entire internet, and this is a problem which happens commonly. In fact, I know of a very large security vendor. Um, their job was security, and their finance team actually did this. They created a folder called Q4 Financial Results, and all their financials data was actually public. There was absolutely no malicious intent over here. It was just user error. I know that we all know that data protection is important, particularly in a work from anywhere environment, but. Why do you think that some companies struggle to get that strong data protection and data loss prevention program off the ground? You know what? What can they do to address that struggle? This is one that I I really find amazing. Like when I, um, you know, during the course of a, an independent assessment or um, you know a customer advisement exercise, when you know they start asking me about you know. Hey, where should we start with DLP? And I'm like, well, what else do you have in place? This is one of the most challenging security processes to put in place. One of the first things you have to do, you have to identify data owners and consult them. Then from there, you have to identify data assets and flows and ensure that those have been cataloged. You know, uh, including you know data shared with business partners, customers, and your supply chain. From there, I would expect to have some kind of business impact assessment that's been fully conducted, and that it has identified what data assets, if compromised, would result in an unacceptable consequences of loss to the business. From there, I think now you're probably ready to start building your administrative DLP policy. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, um, so you know, now you can start defining. What your program governance is going to be for detection, prevention, and notification, and you know, once you have that, that administrative DLP policy is going to mandate what controls are going to be in place to treat those active exposures that you identified in your risk assessment, and it's going to include what safeguards you're going to enforce on the user population for data in transit, data at rest, and data in motion. Absolutely, I think that your point about process and policy and, and the order to which that they need to be put in place really is significant because you can put policies in place, but if you don't have the processes and governance in place before doing that, um, your your DLP policies are are not going to be effective. V, what what's your perspective on that? Yeah, you know, I, I really echo what Brad says. I think um, product needs to come after process. And that's one of the hardest parts. What data do I need to protect? Often, data protection teams are clueless. They just start off with random things like you know social security numbers, credit card numbers, and that's not helpful. They really need to speak with different businesses, business units. Oftentimes, you know, as much as I hate to say this, data is the least important part over there. Because if you think about it, if, for example, if I send a document out and it, and it triggers a hundred credit card numbers. Versus my CEO sends out a document and even triggers one. Probably the data that my CEO sends out is much much more important than what I send out. So the context around who the user is, what is the importance of the data, uh, is very important for actually a policy, a well defined policy. What role do you think user experience, inclusion, education, and communication to the end user plays in ensuring a successful DLP program? That's very very important because. This is exactly what Brad previously said. If you if you only just block, right, the user is going to use an unmanaged device, use an unsanctioned app, and put your most sensitive data there, and you cannot have any control in place to protect your data. So you have to take the user into consideration. You have to coach the user to use a better application. You have to coach the user to understand why that data is sensitive, and you need to educate the user. You have to educate them periodically, saying, "Hey, our data is our most critical asset. Be very careful when you do it." Uh, so again, user experience is very important. There's one other piece for user experience is that even if all this is perfect, and then you upload data, and then your transactions or your interaction to a SaaS application is so slow, it looks like you're on a dial-up modem. Then uh, you know they would they would be yelling and screaming. So you really do need a cloud distributed architecture where none of your traffic is backhauled. 
you do SSL inspection at line speed and that latency for DLP inspection is almost close to zero for your end user. So again, these two are very, very critical for a happy DLP program, as well as for, you know, a, the DLP admin not to be bogged with millions of emails. Brad, what's your perspective on user experience? You know, like all, our users need to understand why certain data protection initiatives are in place. They need to be informed of these controls, you know, in our internet access and use policies, our departure procedures, or, you know, our continuous security awareness uh, advisories, right? I mean, if users are informed, they will understand why a safeguard is in place. They'll understand how to submit a policy exception request if DLP impacts legitimate business initiatives. And you know what else that does? In my experience, that process builds trust for the CISO in an organization. And you know what it does? It instills a sense of competence and approachability from all users within the organization. That is a CISO's dream to get to that state. If, if his users are constantly telling him about anomalies that they're seeing, he's just created another detection engine for himself, the human detection engine. So I, I you know, I've had a lot of success doing that, but this, this actually is quite the challenge when you just think of the overall paradigm, because the, the question was, you know, how does user experience um, communication impact the success of, of a DLP program? Those are polar opposites, DLP and user experience. And like Varavan said, a cloud delivered architecture for DLP, um, you know, content driven and contextual base, you know, that has the flexibility to have the least amount of impact on user experience from any DLP solution I've used in the last 10, 15 years. I wanted to say something about you definitely got passionate about that, about the user experience. And I, I think know. user experience is so critical to the success of a DLP program. But to your point, it's almost the exact opposite of, <laughs> of what you're trying to achieve, right? So, you know, we're almost out of time today. Before we close out, do, we, do you have any last words or a piece of advice for anyone out there looking to deploy DLP or to adapt their data protection strategy to address work from anywhere? I would say for a DLP program to be truly effective, it needs to involve business data and process owners throughout the enterprise, because as we've stated, otherwise, you know, controls, uh, you know, deployed may negatively impact business processes and may not have the legitimacy to uh, sustain, you know, business unit pushback, right, if they're not properly communicated. Um, typically, information technology and security teams do not own business risk. That's why it's important to have stakeholders from all different lines of business with, throughout the organization. And you know, if you, if you don't do any of those, you're gonna have initial missteps that are gonna generate delays or limit the effectiveness of deployments, as well as probably necessitates significant efforts to, that you're gonna need to recover from because DLP has the potential to be incredibly impactful if, if it's done incorrectly. User experience is very, very critical. Every DLP policy, you know, when an admin takes it, he needs to understand user experience uh, and include the user. So that's very, very critical. The second part is don't try to solve world hunger. I mean, don't try to get everything right. You can take, you can take risks. Uh, if you can get the 80% correct, you would have a pretty good program. You'll be better than uh, most other people. And, and finally, uh, DLP needs patience, both from an administration perspective, uh, as well as an end user perspective, and education helps a lot. And I think, again, what you said, you need to build that trust between the user and the admin and, and the IT department. Uh, and a good you know, exception flow, exception flow uh, will make a good uh, DLP program. So again, patience uh, and try to get you know, just the 80% correct. Excellent advice from both of you. I appreciate it. Thank you both. Um, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Varavan, for joining us today. That's all the time we have today. So if you'd like to learn more about DLP or how to better protect your sensitive data, head on over to zscaler.com forward slash DP. There we have a ton of great content for you on DLP, CASB, and data protection. And we also have a way for you to reach out and get in touch with one of our experts. Thanks for joining us and have an amazing day.